take a year to explore some things and discover what your passions are and what your gifts and talents are. I think really the question is, what's the best thing you did and what would you do differently having homeschooled your kids? Yeah. So I'm right there with you. So I'm not a seasoned pro in this category. My kids are uh, all right there at that college age. My youngest is 17. He's about to graduate uh, next year and uh, two graduated this year. Um, and the, the oldest is 23. So, you know, it's interesting to see when the kids hit that 19, 20, 21 year, year old mark, you start to see the fruit of all the seeds that you've been planting for all of these years. So often when the kids are little, it can feel like um, fruitless work, all the prayers at night, all of the time that you take to uh, listen to their stories and their crazy questions and, 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 and just wearing yourself out. But you know, you see when they get older and they start to make decisions on their own, you see the wisdom that you planted years ago begins to, 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 to grow. And you see the decisions they make about who they're going to marry. And uh, as they start talking about family and you see their faith choices. Uh, so it's, it's a very uh, revealing time and, and can be a very rewarding time. Uh, I say that just to encourage you when they are younger to, to keep pouring into them. Uh, one of the unique things that happened to us this year is two of our kids graduated high school and they're both scheduled to go to college, but they both have opted to take a gap year, which is a really interesting option. And I have become a huge fan of this. And I've talked to a lot of really successful people who say, I wish I had taken a gap year. We think that's a fantastic idea. And if you're not familiar with it, the concept is rather than rush into another four years of an intense academic schedule where you've just got your head buried in more in more books, trying to, you know, get keep your GPA up. Take a year to explore some things and discover what your passions are and what your gifts and talents are. My my daughter discovered that she loves art. She she academically she did really well, but she loves art. She ended up after 10 years of soccer and uh, being good enough to get scholarships, uh, scholarships at some good colleges, she actually said, you know what? I don't, want to, I don't want to play soccer anymore. Had she rushed into college on a, scholar, scholarship, <laughs> a scholarship, we would have been four years with a very rigorous schedule that I think would have really soured her academic experience at college. And so instead, she took a gap year. She traveled to Italy uh, and she took some painting classes in Florence. She then started a business uh, painting and creating greeting cards and Christmas decorations that raised enough money uh, to pay for a trip to Spain wow. with a language school so that she could become fluent in Spanish. And she's loving it. And so, again, this is like taking the lessons we've learned from homeschooling, where you get to direct your path, you get to custom and tailor make the education, and you get to not just, you know, have your money spent by other people, but you get to decide where you want to invest and create a rich cultural experience that will help you get your feet on the ground and understand who you are as a person, how God made you. And this gap year has turned out to be wonderful. I think going into college after a year like that is a really great way to better know what you want to study when you go into college rather than figuring it out three years in going, wow, I don't know if I really want the degree that I've been studying for all this time. So having said that, um, our kids haven't gone off to college yet, so we'll see how it all works out. But but that's something that I'm really glad we're doing, and I would highly recommend to people. Uh, even if you're out of college, I would say, uh, you know, if, if you have an opportunity to travel, to experience other cultures, if you have an opportunity uh, to discover, you know, where your passions really lie, I think you then can be much wiser about where you invest all your time and energy going into a career in the future. Yeah, for sure. Um, okay, great answer. Um, we have time for just a couple more because I want to get to some of the other stuff you have going on, yeah. Kirk. Um, 
this mom is asking what to do with boys. So she's got three teenage boys and uh, she said her husband is really involved in bringing up godly men. Uh, but a lot of times she's at home with them alone and they are high energy. Um, so you have three boys. Yeah. What can you just give her any advice? Um, on she, she has no girls. So and then this sounds totally foreign to me. I only have girls in my family. I have yeah. five nieces, two daughters and a sister. So I wouldn't know what to do with boys either. Um, do you yeah. have any advice for her? And you guys could swap kids for a week and just right. see what like. Oh, but I'd really miss my girls. <laughs> so what to what to do with boys? So we have we have three boys. I remember when when our, I don't know how old her kids are. They're teenagers. They're three teenagers. Okay, they're three teenagers now. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> well, let's see. I, I'm sure your husband's got. You know, he's a guy, so he he's he's probably got uh, all kinds of fun stuff that he would love to do with them. I know my sons love to hunt. Um, they love to play video games. Um, you know, they're guys. They love to, uh, you know, play football. They love to, you know, um, do wild and crazy things. And so I try to find time to, to plan some trips. So I've made some friends uh, where they go hunting. I don't hunt in California. Uh, hunting's a little different out there anyway. <laughs> and so we try to make a trip once a year, once every couple of years and go, uh, you know, harvest a deer and bring back some, uh, some, uh, venison. Sometimes we'll go duck hunting. Uh, we've made friends with, uh, the Robertson family from duck dynasty. And that's, that's a trip going back there and duck hunting with uncle Cy. Uh, <laughs> one time, uh, my son Luke actually went squirrel hunting with uncle Cy and he got so excited when he got his first squirrel that when he came home to California, he got out the pellet gun and started shooting all the squirrels and, and anything he even moved up in the trees in the backyard. Yes. Did and he I, eat them? Luke, you have to, this is Luke. And I had, Luke, you, you got to stop this. This is California. You know, you could get arrested and thrown in jail for this. <laughs> so um, <clears throat> I go surfing with my kids, um, you know, bike riding, make a campfire, go camping, uh, go fishing. I don't know what your sons love to do. They may love, they may not like to do any of that kind of stuff. He may, you know, they may be more artistic and may love to, to, uh, to, you know, to sing or to act and, and do some of the things that I do for a living. But I would say, you know, the most important thing we've learned is just, uh, be in relationship with your kids, do life together. Uh, life is, is, is much richer, much, much more fun. And I think the way God designed it is be, is to be for us to be together. And family is, uh, is just so important. So, um, yeah. Ask the kids what they want to do and, and find time to do those things with them in the midst of all of your teaching and all of your, uh, you know, education and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. And let them be boys because <laughs> yeah. boys are, boys are different. Boys have cooties. I know this. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. Here's, here's, uh, possibly the last question that we're going to be able to get to, but it says, what is your most treasured advice for homeschooling families today? Most treasured advice. Let's see. <laughs> uh, I'm going to think about this. Um, so let me let me just rephrase this in a different way. If you had someone who came to you and said, "Kirk, why should I homeschool my kids?" What would you say to them? Why should I homeschool my kids? Well, I would say there's there's so many benefits of homeschooling your kids. Um, you know, we, we've, we've had our struggles with, with homeschooling. Homeschooling is not, uh, this utopia where, where you know, all, all kids turn out perfectly. As long as you get, you know, you take them to a WANA class and, and you get the Sun Life curriculum or the Abeka curriculum or, or whatever it is. Uh, there's struggles with academics. There's struggles with laziness. There's struggles with, uh, sibling rivalry, uh, everybody being in the house, you can have cabin fever, all, all this kind of stuff. But we've learned to trust God that our kids are, are in his hands, to remember that none of them are finished yet. Uh, I'm not finished yet, thank God. God's still working on our kids. And that if we continue to obey God and train them up in the way they should go, that he's gonna produce a good result. Um, I, I meet a lot of homeschool families who can feel overwhelmed, they feel exhausted, they feel discouraged, wondering if they're doing the right thing. Am I ruining my kids' education by homeschooling them because I'm not an expert in these areas? Uh, feeling like they're gonna have a nervous breakdown. And I, I would say uh, three things. Uh, number one, the best advice anyone ever gave me is, you know, the, the secret to becoming, to being a good parent and, and to raising good kids is, 
be an example of what you want your children to become. A lot of people think, well, it's all about the curriculum. I gotta have the right curriculum or this homeschooling thing's not gonna work. No, actually you, are the, you the parent, are the most important curriculum. I, I would say that. And someone told us that. And at the end of the day, if you can model joy in your home, even when you're frustrated and overwhelmed, if you can model patience and self-control and integrity and faith and, and a hard work ethic, you are building those things into your kids, those most essential qualities you want to see in them. There's no class they're going to take or curriculum you're going to give them that's going to be more important than them just living with somebody who is a living, breathing example of everything you want to see in your kids. So strive to be the kind of person you want them to become. Um, the next best piece of advice someone gave us is stay in relationship with your kids. It's so easy uh, to get into adversarial places with your kids to where you feel like uh, it's, it's, it's me against my three-year-old. Have you ever felt like that? Uh, or it's me against my 17-year-old. And they think they've, they've got everything figured out and you know nothing. You know, you, you don't know how to use technology the way that they do. And they're so much smarter and so much wiser. And it's very easy to get at odds. And you know what? We understand that uh, at some point, the consequences of their poor decisions are all going to come crashing down on them. And when they do, who do we want them to turn to? They want, we want them to turn to us. And so we've got to find a way to stay in relationship with our kids. And for me, that's often just saying, I'm going to take a deep breath, relax, and realize that I can't fix everything that needs to be fixed in my kids right now. Some of these things God's going to, going to fix. He only is the one who can fix them. And I'm just going to continue trying to be an example of what I want to see in my kids. And I'm going to let them know that I love them. I'm here for them. I want to be with them, even when, when we don't always agree on things. Uh, and that there's nothing they could ever do to make me not love them. Uh, and, and then lastly, I would say, teach them the word of God. Uh, you know, you, 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 someone wrote in a question about marriage and, and family. Uh, how do I talk to my kids about marriage between being between a man and a woman? <clears throat> I would say there's a thousand issues that, that our kids need to understand from God's perspective. Those are the ways that lead to blessing. And I would say, don't give up a biblical education. That's the most important thing you could ever give your kids. Uh, and it will lead to healthy marriages, healthy families and ultimately a healthy nation. So um, be a student of the Bible yourself and then teach them. Um, find ways to teach your kids God's truth on every subject. <clears throat> yeah, amen, uh, amen to that. that I, I know we're, we're running out of time here. I would love to, uh, if you don't mind, uh, just read to you a poem that my daughter wrote. Yeah. Um, and, and I'm not trying to be that parent. I'm not trying to like, you know, you know, my child is an honor student and, and you know, <laughs> make a bumper sticker out of it. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not going to do that. But my daughter was homeschooled. She then went to private school and we found that in order to navigate through the moral swamp that she was in with many of the peer groups that she encountered, um, homeschooling gave her a foundation and relationships with me and my wife that helped her to navigate through all the difficulties that she experienced in high school. And she came out the other end uh, and she was asked to write a poem to the rest of the, the students there at the school. And, I, and I'd love to read it for yeah. you. She read it at her graduation. And um, so she's 17 years old and uh, she wrote a poem called Life Within. And uh, I'm, I'm reading it here. It says, life will not wait for you and you must not wait to live. Each second, each moment is a chance to give. For the purpose of life is to serve, not receive. And what will be remembered when this world you leave? Will the message left recount an existence barely beginning or a life full of passion and purpose and giving? On that singular day when the body fails, when the flesh becomes weak and mortality prevails, what has been taken? What truly forgotten? If your hope is in heaven, less is subtracted than gotten. Then let not your spirit, the essence of you, leave this beautiful world without imparting something new. Your spirit, your smile is the profoundest gift, not to yourself, but to those others it lifts. Up to communion, up to youth, up to joy, 
up to truth. You are a vessel on the eve of a shore holding liquid potential. Your job, simply pour. Pour into a mind, pour into a soul, pour into a heart and press on toward that shore. And while you press on, dive into the present. Jump into the air and grasp heaven's wings. If things scare and excite you, do those things. Live with zest and dance in the sun. Life's not a race, nor is it yet done. But the joyful ones have already won. May these words be a call to engage life anew. Wherever you go, whatever you do, you are a vessel and Christ is your guide. Be filled with excitement, reject pride. Be thoughtful and listen, hug and embrace, and let God's joy bloom in your face. Feel the wonder of life. Go forth with courage and a grin. Christ lives inside you. Your strength is within. I love I, that. I read that. Here's why I read that long poem to you. And thank you for listening. <sighs> That's what makes it all worth it to me as a dad. Yeah. To homeschool your kids and to pour into them and then see the fruit come out so sweet like that. And it's not always going to be that way. That was one of my kids. Uh, you know, my other kids didn't write poems like that, but in different ways, <clears throat> God shows you that your work and all of your toil and your sleepless nights and your thankless days are not in vain. And he will finish the work that he starts in your kids and, and, and he will reward your faithfulness as a parent. Oh, I love that so much. You know, third John says, there's no greater joy than knowing that your children are walking in righteousness. Yeah. And that's what it's all about, Kirk. That's what parenting is all about. It's all about leading our kids towards Christ and raising them up to live a life that honors God and impacts his kingdom. Amen. <clears throat> and, um, and I know you, you, you and I and Garrett have talked about that and that everything we do, everything we do through homeschooling, through raising our kids into adulthood, everything we do should be for the kingdom of God into impacting others and, and leading people yeah. to a life-saving relationship with Jesus. And that is what it's all about. That's what homeschooling is all about. That's what parenting and marriage and everything is about, is about leading people to Jesus. It, it, it is. And yes. And I, I like to um, remind people that I think a, a, a true view of the gospel goes beyond just making sure our kids get to heaven. I think it, it's, it's, yeah. so much about bringing heaven to earth through our children yes. and their hearts that have been transformed. So just think about it this morning uh, here at this church, uh, I'm, I'm in our tour bus and we've got the news on. And so they're talking about the democratic debates coming up. Bloomberg is now uh, going to jump into the race. And you know, this, this party is slamming this party and, and it's, and it's nuts and crazy. And who do you believe anymore? All that stuff. And we say, Trump's got another crazy tweet, but look at all the good things he did over here. And, and, and yet these people have more compassion or do they really? And all of the, the chaos that we see in the political world, wouldn't it be great if we had 10 candidates to choose from that all had biblical worldviews? Yeah. Wouldn't imagine we would say, well, that would be wonderful. Uh, well, the, how is that going to happen? Let's make, let's make a, 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 a 100 year plan right now. Let's start with it. And let's plan on our children's children being those candidates that we would look up there on that debate stage and go, eh, I'll take any of the five on the right. They're great. I'm in. Wouldn't that be great? How are we going to do that? I think that plan involves homeschooling. Yeah. I think that's the, that is the, the greatest hope we have for having a, a nation and a world that turns around, which by the way, is what is, that's the view we ought to have. Unfortunately, a lot of Christians today have the view of saying, well, the reason that all, all of the political leaders in the world are so rotten is because uh, the devil's in charge and he's the one controlling everything. And I go, wait a minute. I, 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 get, I get the concept, but uh, Jesus came to destroy the works of the devil. He, he took the keys to the kingdom. All authority was given to him. He rose into heaven and says, now that I have all authority, go and make disciples of every nation. And so let's start right here with America. Uh, if you're watching in America, let's disciple the United States of America, teach them how to obey the commands of God. And the way that we do that is by discipling our own children in our own home. That's right. And in 50 years, let's have one candidate with a solid biblical worldview who cares about people. Yeah. I think that'd be a great start. <laughs> Amen. Amen. 
I love Monumental too. I told you that that movie, if you guys haven't seen Monumental, it's it's a must see. Literally put your kids in front of the TV today. Stop all your schooling and watch it. I think, is it on Amazon Prime? I think it was at one point. Either Amazon or Netflix. I'm not sure. Okay. I think it's on Amazon Prime, but it's fantastic. And it it will bring just more of that message of just getting back to our, our the godly roots of our nation. Yeah. So really quickly, because I know we're out of time. Um, can you just tell people really quickly about some of the things you have going on? I want to talk about Living Room Reset, um, just where you're going to be. And can you just give a brief description of what that is? Because it is amazing. We got to join you for it last year and um, you're going to be all over the country now. So what sure. is that? So um, Living Room Reset is really a, it, it, it's a chance for couples to have a night out and to just stop and reset, to reprioritize and reinvest in the things that matter most in our families, our faith, our marriage, our kids. And so it's a, it's, you know, two and a half hour date night where we laugh together, we sing together and we learn from God's word, downloading some truth that's gonna make all the difference in our marriage and family. So we're on a 33 city tour that's going on right now. Love to have you come if you're watching this, uh, just go to my website, kirkcameron.com and you can get tickets. There's all kinds of cool VIP options and backstage bus party, fun, <laughs> 1980s time capsule stuff to experience. And then uh, I'm actually really excited about a brand new film that I'm working on. Um, it is based on a true story, a extremely inspiring story that deals with the, the, uh, the pro-life issue. And even more than that, the issue of adoption. And that's close to my heart, having four adopted kids. So uh, we're writing the script now and should be filming this summer for a film that should be released in the spring or fall of next year. That is awesome. Is there a title yet or are you not, can you not we say? Have, we don't have a title yet. Okay, okay. We don't have a title yet. Awesome, well, we'll, we'll keep up with that. But yes, yeah, for I'll sure, check out Living Room Reset. Um, and I saw that you have a marriage devotional now that you've, it you, looks like you've linked arms with um, YouVersion, uh, Bible.com. That's right, yeah, and, there's, there's a Living Room Reset um, marriage devotional reading program that you can go through. It's a five day program. And uh, a lot of people have really loved the U version format. Yeah. And so, uh, yeah, you can check that out as well. Very cool. Okay. Anything else you want to share? Any I want to share just how thankful I am for you, Yvette and Garrett and all that you're doing for the homeschool movement. I just, I love it. And I love your passion and I love your, uh, your, your heart for encouraging and supporting homeschool. Uh, moms and dads. It's, it's I think, one of the single greatest hopes that we have for the, the church and the kingdom and the gospel uh, flourishing on the earth is, is the homeschool movement. I think as parents, we assume that kids are going to just know the right way to do things. You have to teach them first and then train them by teaching them to do it over and over again until they actually get it. Imagine trying to teach your child how to tie his shoes without the practice principle. If the practice principle is vital for teaching such morally neutral tasks as mm -hmm. tying shoes, how much more important is it for training children in Christ-like character? I speak to parents all the time who come up to me and they see what's happening, but they don't know what to do. And I just want to stand up and say, you can do this. Here is a solution. This is Yvette Hampton, host of the Schoolhouse Rocked podcast. Join us each week for a new episode as we offer encouragement and resources on biblical discipleship from popular speakers and authors, as well as parents just like you and me. Find out more at schoolhouserocked.com or listen anywhere you find your favorite podcast.